Hello, I am back for part two of this adorable TV tray that I'm working on for a client. Um, so please say hello when you come on. Ah, okay, you can't cross your legs under the TV tray. You cannot. All right, so for those of you who are just joining, um, please say hello. Hi there. Oh, Melissa and Connie, hi y'all. Um, so I had this, uh, I just left Dixie Bell's page. Um, a client of mine that I did a gumball machine for, the most recent one that I posted in those neutral colors that were soft pink, caviar fluff, and French linen, uh, accented in silver metallic. Um, hi, Kathy. Hi, hun. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Diane and Sue. Hey there. Um, anyway, she, I need, it's ready for her to get, and I also need to get her, she also ordered a TV tray. So she went to Amazon and uh, ordered this TV tray and had it just sent directly to me and I'm customizing it for her daughter as the gumball machine was also for and they're for Christmas gifts. So I am doing Christmas uh, and I cannot be friends with some of y'all. Hey Terry, thank you, honey. I can't be friends with some of y'all because uh, some of y'all have already finished your Christmas shopping. What? <laughs> like how? Well, I got, well, I don't know. Amazon, <laughs> how have you done it? I'm dying. I can't believe it. Uh, anyway, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, but that was hard to hear. It was very hard to hear. I thought I was being all great, like, hey, look, let's get some Christmas ideas. And y'all are done. Uh, anyway, so look, it was super light oak, like this. Just light oak. And uh, it had a really shiny finish on it. A really shiny finish, like a baked on, straight from China, kind of. Straight from China kind of finish. Um, hello, Nina. Hi, Laura and Denise and Susan. Hey, guys. So, um, the finish was so shiny that I felt like it needed more than boss, which is a primer really to block odors and stains and stop bleed throughs um, and stop smells. Uh, it also helps your paint to adhere. But when something is super, super slick, hi, Carol, back for part two. Uh, oh, good, Kathy. I'm so glad she's working on her whimsy tree stuff from last year. Um, <laughs> not here. Therefore, we can't be besties. Liz, I got you, girl. Me and you right here. <laughs> Julie, you're on time. You're so cute. Well, anyway, so it had a real shiny finish, so I decided to go with slick stick. Even though I know it's wood, um, and slick stick is usually mostly used on glass and metal and ceramic and uh, things like that, but even if it's wood and it has that hard shiny surface and you don't want to sand it down I know it was a small table. I could have sanded it. I hate the mess um, I don't have a fancy sander. I just didn't want to sand it down So I cleaned it and I painted it with slick stick I did one coat of slick stick let it dry for a couple of hours Did a second coat of slick stick let it dry overnight left that then I came out here today Right before the live and I painted one coat of fluff, which is the white I did one coat of fluff Dixie Bell's fluff down here Dixie Bell's fluff, one coat, let that dry. Then I went into this whole spiel about how I make my own patterns and I have for years um, for my furniture pieces because I tend to do a lot of customization. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that I was customizing pieces I think before everybody owned a Cricut and you can now like make your own stencils and stuff like that. But so I was hand painting them on. So <clears throat> I made a lot of these patterns in all different sizes. I've got them, this size that we used right here, which was this one. Um, I've got smaller ones. I've got some that are huge, like as big as nine drawer dressers. And I would do these big patterns and I would paint like their monogram on the front <clears throat> in these big patterns. So I've saved every single pattern that I've ever made, ever. I've got them in hearts and stars and ovals and everything. So this is the pattern that we used, just like this. Made it out of cardstock. Um, fold your paper in half and then fold your paper in half again and then draw whatever design you want just like elementary school just like grade school open it up open it up and then you have this right I've done it with wrapping paper butcher's paper uh, brown wrapping paper this is cardstock laid it down traced it out with a pencil and then I did stripes so we're completely done with stripes. I uh, taped off my stripes, I burnished my edges, and I did them in caviar, caviar. All right, so black and white stripes is where we are so far. Now I'm gonna paint my center in soft pink. So I'm gonna do that with you guys real quick. Now I'm gonna do soft pink, and then I'm gonna do probably damask in white. So 
you would ask yourself, why, why wouldn't she just do the damask stencil and put pink on it because there's already white here? Well, there's a reason. Let me show you. Here's my stencil, which it's new, and it's by a company that I love very much and I work for, and I just was, so there's word out that there's stencils. They're not out yet, but they're in the, in the works, okay? So the jewelry armoire that I posted last week, the red jewelry armoire with the black and white striped top with the gold damask on the sides, this was that gold damask on the side. It's beautiful. So if I leave this white and I lay this down, I'm going to have pink damask on white background. I want to have a pink background and lay it down and have white damask. Why? I don't know. I just do. I just know that that's what I want. So that means I have to take like a little extra step here and paint this whole center that I had uh, taped off. So let's see if I can get this open. The other option, I'll show you the other option too. Okay, hold on. Please hold. The other option I thought about, but I think it's too juvenile, even though I love polka dots. I thought about using my stick and style stencil roll, which is uh, by Redesign with Prima, and it rolls off like this, and it's sticky, it's tacky. And you can lay that down and do polka dots like that, which I've never used this. I've always done my own polka dots with, uh, I have a little technique that I use with like a craft brush. Where'd my brush go? Oh, I've shown it many times over the years. You just put your brush down and you spin your brush. It makes the prettiest little polka dot. And you can put it wherever you want. Um, but these are really handy for people that don't trust themselves to do that. And I haven't used this yet. But I feel like the polka dots, because this young lady is a tween, um, I feel like especially kindergarten, Leslie, whatever. It is simple though. Like this is that simple. It really is that simple until I paint her name that people will freak out about that, but you don't even have to paint the name. You, I mean, you can paint it. You, you can do, um, get the stencil letters. They make really cute ones. They make cool fonts and stencils and just do like all caps and you, you can do your own. Um, Anyway, she, I feel like this is a, that she might find this a little juvenile. So, and if I did dots, I would do pink background with white dots. I just know I would. I wouldn't want a white background with pink dots. I would paint it pink and then do white dots on it. But I'm going to paint it pink and do white damask. So, I think the white damask, like I said over on Dixie Bell, damask is uh, very feminine. It can be very regal and adult-like, but it's also, you can use it for babies and in baby nurseries. It's just feminine, and I really like it. So, this little girl's bedroom's pretty royal. Her bedroom is royal. So, I think the damask goes really well. Okay, I'm just using my one-inch brush, just getting a little bit on the tip of my brush, just like that, because I'm going to go uh, down here and um, frame out my frame first. So I'm just following it with one edge. I, I'm not using an angle brush to do this, which I often do. So what I did was I immediately went back up to where I'd been and kind of smoothed all my paint out because I don't want to leave any ridge. You don't want to get so focused like this on your frame all the way around and then you go back and you have the other edge of your brush left a ridge. So you want to constantly go back behind yourself and feather out your paint nice and flat so that you don't have that ridge there. Okay, so back over here. Now, I, like I said over on the other video, I am not gonna leave this edge raw, so it does not have to be perfect. Um, you uh, always wanna frame it out, whether you, you do it in black, a black frame, or gold. this one's probably gonna be metallic silver because this client uh, that's what was on the gumball machine. She prefers silver over gold. And so this one will probably be a metallic silver frame. So right now I'm just doing this little point down in the corner and then again, go back and, and spread out your paint, feather it out. I have terrible posture when I do this. Y'all see me and I have really good posture normally, but I have to hunker down, hunker down. So I'm just putting my edge right on the line. I'm just painting with one edge. I'm just painting with one edge right on the line. 
and then going backwards and feathering out my edge just like that so that when I go back to fill it in, uh, there's not that double raised edge there. And I, do you see how I just naturally flip my brush? You can load less times if you naturally flip your brush. And I do it without thinking. I don't know if you're watching close enough, but you'll see I do it all the time if y'all watch me do detail. I just go until I don't have any paint left and I just flip my brush and pick right back up and keep going. Before I get too far, see all that paint piled up there? I just go back up in there and I smear it out. Not any specific direction. The goal is just to get it flat, to make it flat. Get all the way up here in this point. Okay, so just like I said over on Dixie Bells, you know, when I do stuff like this, y'all go crazy and everybody starts doing them and I love it. So please, 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 if you decide you're gonna do this or any anything that you decide you wanna try one of these frames on, I would love it if you would tag me so that I know that I have inspired you. I would love to see that. Um, it makes me really, really happy. Some people send it to me privately in a message, but it's just as easy, just tag me. Um, and let me know, it makes me very, very happy. I would love to see them. All the way around like that, flip my brush, keep going. Before it gets too far, I've got piled up paint right here, just go up into it, move it around. Just move it around and go all the way. We just have to get this frame on the outside done and then we can fill in the middle. And with the, the beauty of a heat gun, having a heat gun around is that means you can just move on really quickly. Like we could fill this in and go ahead and stencil it within just minutes. I'm trying to think what all I've done this on. I've done this on a lot on like a, summer camp trunks for kids, uh, backs of denim jackets, uh, like I said, dressers, armoires, those little dress up play carts, they sell those on Amazon. I've had a bunch of those sent to me here over the years. Um, we're almost done, back up in here. I'm at a weird angle, I just can't see very well. There we go. All right, so the frame is done. Can y'all see that? The outside of the frame is done. Now I just need to fill in. Can y'all see this? See? So cute, right? All right, so now I'm gonna get a little, I don't have to, but I can. It's up to you. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger brush. I've just got a bigger brush here. Um, it's a little bit damp because I just washed it. And I'm just gonna dip in here and just fill the rest of this in. You could still just use your little art craft brush if you wanted to, but just kind of go back up to where I was. You don't have to go any specific direction. Um, if you have a little water nearby, I, don't, I wouldn't spritz this because you don't wanna mess up your black and white stripes. I wouldn't mist this, but if you had a little bit of water nearby, you could just dip your brush and a little bit of water and it would smooth out a lot better. Got like a little yuck in there. And I was saying on the other page that this is such a good idea to do for not even just kids, but this is a great grandparent idea. Um, you know, Gigi and Pappy, uh, that's us. <laughs> uh, Gigi and Pappy, I could paint my own. I could paint my own for us, right? But you could let the kids make them. They could put their handprints on them. Um, you know, do the pretty, make it so it doesn't just look crazy. Like put the stripes around the outside, do your little frame, and then let the kids do handprints inside the frame as the background. Like we're gonna do a stencil. Have your kids do handprints on the back in a light color and then do their name over the top of that. Isn't that a good idea? It's a good idea, right? Okay, so that's that. That's done. Now, goodness. We're gonna dry it and then we're gonna stencil it. So it's not the best height to have 
Now I can look at some comments now. Let's see. Melissa, you like, or you like the idea of that? I don't have grandbabies yet, but I do have grand puppies. Well, hey, puppies have paws. Grand puppies have paws. I've had a lot of puppy paws in, in my paint over the years. One time I was painting a, uh, actually it was Matt. Matt was painting a big nativity scene for his sister. And uh, no, it wasn't that she, he did a nativity scene, but he also did a, uh, what is it? Uh, the Grinch. She wanted a big Grinch for her yard. So he painted this big, huge, long uh, plywood in cobalt blue. It was going to be the background in like a midnight, not cobalt, but like a midnight blue. Uh, anyway, he painted it. And he was going to let it dry. This is back when we had Harley, our lab. And he left it flat on the ground. Well, Harley was the kind of lab that if she saw any blanket or pillow on the ground, she assumed it was for her. And that was her spot. And she would spot. And she was always out here in the garage with me. So anyway, we went inside for some reason. And he left that thing flat on the ground. And I guess she was in her 14-year-old decrepit self. Wandered out here. And I come barging out here in the shop to paint some more. And I look up and I'm like, Harley was laying on that blue board jaw and it was still wet. She was laying on the blue board and she, I saw her, I was like, oh my gosh, Harley. She stood up one whole side of her big, huge white lab body. She was white, was cobalt blue. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. So yeah, I've had lots of dog prints on my pieces. Do y'all remember... Has anyone on here been following me long enough that they remember when Harlow was a baby and I was keeping her and she got into food coloring, red food coloring? Do any of y'all remember that? Um, yes, yes, sweet girl. I, Julie, I am doing, uh, I am doing Christmas. It's a Christmas gift for a client. It's a client who ordered it as a Christmas gift, okay? Anyway, do, who remembers who remembers Zadie? Does anyone remember Zadie? Uh, not Zadie, Harlow, who's now four, showed up with red food coloring all over her. Uh, Zadie was into slime at that time and had made slime and left some red food coloring out. And Harlow was just started walking. I need to repost that. She had just started walking. She was like, you know, 12 months old. Somehow she got into the red food coloring and went up and down the hall with it while she was squeezing. It was all over her clothes, all over her legs and her little feet. And I'm in the kitchen, I'm loading the dishwasher and I hear her little feet coming in and I look up and I thought, she, I almost had a heart attack. I started bawling. I thought she was bleeding all over. I thought it was blood all over. It was red food coloring all over. And so then when I really, I grab her and I pick her up and I'm just like, oh, where, where? And I'm like looking all over her body trying to find where this horrible gash must be because she was covered, uh, not just a little bit. And I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm going to forget to repost this for you guys. So anyway, then I could follow the trail. Once I realized she wasn't her, but I'm like, what is this? And I followed the trail. It's all, luckily we have a tile in the hall. You could see her little feet up and down the hall. And you could see where she'd gone back and forth. Like she had gone to down to Zadie's room and back up the hall towards Gigi and down to Zadie's room and back up the hall. And then she went all the way to me in the kitchen. Isn't that, does anyone remember that? Y'all don't remember that. No one remembers. It was shocking. Okay, so this stencil is not quite large enough to just lay down and it be all the way across. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to one side and then I'm gonna have to lift it and match it and lay it back down because it's not quite big enough. All right, so when you have a stencil, I don't stencil a lot. Um, I did, I used to, I used to stencil a lot. You can use a roller if you like. The only thing about using a roller is you need to have a roller that's small enough that it will allow you, I've gotta get right into these little points, but I think I can do it with this roller. You gotta get right into the little points here and be able to follow the line of this frame. The other thing you can do is use like a sponge or a dauber, or you can use a flat brush like this. I usually prefer to stencil this way because y'all know I love to I, I pounce. I love to pounce. I love to pounce painting. Um, I just like to pounce. Uh, but I think I'm gonna use this. So I have a plate. Let me get the plate. You don't wanna use very much paint at all. Uh, we are going to use my fluff. 
which is right here. And actually my fluff is kind of thick, which is actually better. I'm just gonna put a little bit down on here. And I'm gonna roll it out onto this paper plate on my roller, just like this. I'm gonna roll off as much as I possibly can, but I do want the whole roller covered from one side to the other. And then I just wanna roll off the excess. I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm just gonna get started here. Maybe I should put that damask right in the middle. That's probably what I should do. Okay, so I'm just gonna, this is gonna be a little bit tedious because I am gonna try to keep it within my little frame, framed out area here. Probably be easier if I stood up. Remember, I don't have to get it right to the edge because I'm gonna, this is gonna have a extra frame around it in silver. I just wanna to try to keep it off of the caviar if I can. If I weren't on video, guys, I'd be standing up and this wouldn't look so awkward. And you know what? If I don't get it just right, it's only paint, right? Isn't that what we always say? It's only paint. If I get a little bit on my caviar, it's only paint. There we go, we're on a roll now. Sometimes I get overconfident though, and then I'm like, dang it, I messed it up, like right the last thing. So I haven't had to reload it all, and I don't want it to be like super, super bright. I want it to be very subtle, just a soft damask in the background. Um, did y'all see my, uh, the, what was it, the painted chair that I did? Did, did anyone notice on the painted chair in the background, there's a real soft butterfly in white. The chair backing was pink. And then in white, I did a soft butterfly. That was a lot of fun. And those were IOD stamps, but I did it, I mimicked a damask basically, but it was done with IOD stamps. And that was very soft and very subtle. Not everybody has to notice, but if you're into details, you will notice. All right. So now I'm just gonna have to pick the sucker up and move it over to the other side. We need a little bit more paint, let me see. Yay, look how pretty. So pretty, you wanna see? See? You like? Let's see here. Hey Lynn, literally on a roll, I am. You're on a roll, roller, rolling paint. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna match this. Um, so I'll put this damask um, that's in the middle, I'm just moving, shifting it over and matching it exactly to where that damask is from top to bottom, making sure that looks good. And that should match up with the other side. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit more Fluff to my uh, to my plate. I really don't use a roller very often. I really, really don't. Very rarely. Okay, roll off excess. There we go. We don't have much left to do over here on this side. Man, I used to do stencils all the time on furniture. I don't know why, I don't really know why I stopped. And this one little bottom curve here. I think that's it. I think we're good. Let's see. Yep. Looks good, Lucy. Look. Oh, so sweet. That's so sweet. So sweet. I know y'all can do this. I know y'all can. So I'm not going to keep y'all anymore tonight. Um, I'm going to let this dry. And then I am 
probably what I will do is uh, I have that those little tiny bottles of paint that I like. Oh, you know what I could use? I could use Solly's, uh, Solly Joe's uh, Posh Pigments in silver because it's super opaque and I can make it as, you know, as um, opaque as I want. So I'll probably use Posh Pigments in silver to go around the edge. I think I have silver uh, to frame it out. And then I will be putting her name across the middle and then it'll get, I'll let it dry really well. And then it's gonna get three coats of gator hide, three thin coats of gator hide. And it'll be done. It will be done. I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, I do need to go, I need to do this underside. But you know what I was thinking? Instead of taking the stripes down around the under, this underside lip, I think I might do it in silver. Since I'm gonna do the frame in silver, I think I might do silver around that edge. Really kind of finish that out. And then some people were struggling because I didn't paint the bottom, but I really just don't know. I gotta really look at the construction of it, but I just don't know with the scissoring if it's gonna hold up well. Plus I think she's gonna put her feet on it down there. And I don't want it to get, I, I can protect the top, but I don't know. I just think that the legs are gonna get too much wear. But maybe I'll tip them in silver. You know, maybe I could tip them in silver and do like a black ring and a white ring and a soft pink ring. You know, like silver and then make little ends on them. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I gotta see. I gotta think about it. Yeah, silver around the edge, Lynn. I like that idea. Oh, y'all like it. You do too, Deborah. Um, I will freehand her name, Dina. I will. Um, all of my signs and all I freehanded. That's what I was saying earlier on Dixie Bell's page. Uh, when I started doing these years ago, I don't think people, I don't think it was common even for anyone to have crickets and stuff in their house like they do now. And so I just taught myself how to freehand and script and, um, I'm just, it's easy for me. It's just real easy for me. I'll just use a ruler for a straight line and then I'll do like a script and then I'll do my little double down thing and then fill it in. I'm gonna do her name in black. So I'm gonna do the frame in silver and her name will be in black. And then it'll get three coats of gator hide. Now, if you do not, if you can't freehand, um, I have bags and bags of letter stencils. Um, so they make them in, not, I haven't seen scripts so much. Well, some are script, but you're stuck with size. But you know what size I like? They're about this big and they are not stencils. Have y'all ever thought about the reverse of this? If you want to do names on something and you don't think you can freehand it and you don't find a stencil that you like, but go to Hobby Lobby and buy the chipboard letters. They come in all sizes. They're cheap. They come in a whole pack of A to Z. Um, they're about this big. They are so cute. They have like a little ball on the end of each letter. They're really cute. They're chipboard. You know, they look like cardboard. Um, it's a great idea. Use those, lay them down in place, draw your line, lay them in place, draw your line in chalk, by the way, guys, not pencil. Pencil will not erase off of here. Draw it in chalk, and then you can just wet, you wipe it with a wet paper towel and the chalk goes away. Um, then lay your, your little chipboard letters across and just trace your chipboard letters. It's so cute. It's really cute for those of you that struggle uh, with free handing. What about using a gel stain on the legs in black? Ah, oh, who said that? Catherine. Hmm, that's a good idea. That's a that's a good idea. It's a real good idea. I could use a voodoo. I could even use a um, no pain gel stain in black, or I could use the voodoo. And what is that one? Tobacco Road is that the black one? That's a good idea. Maybe I maybe I will try that on the, on the underneath side. Oh, you will, hun. You will. Who said that? You will see the final look. I promise. I never, I really don't ever not show something. I always take pictures and show. I will share it for sure. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, thank you all for joining me tonight over here and all of you that joined me over there as well. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope maybe, maybe you'll try it. Don't forget to tag me if you do. I would love to see it. Um, Melissa, you like that idea? I know because you know what? I Crickets and all those things that do all those cut, the, I, I can't, I'm not going to learn those. I'm not gonna learn them. Lonnie, hi honey, good to see you. What's the difference between the two stains? One is an oil-based Carol, the no pain gel stain is an oil base, and uh, the Voodoo gel stain is water base. That is the difference. Uh, and the oil base you can put right over a factory coat, and it'll deepen a factory coat. Uh, 
going to be lovely, Jan. Thank you. You're welcome, Dina. Okay, guys. Well, I will see y'all. Um, what's today? Wednesday. So I'll see some of y'all for Friday morning coffee talk. And then Instagram. I'll be doing Instagram this week. I did not do Instagram last week. Um, I don't remember why. I don't remember why. But I missed last Friday. But I will be doing this Friday. So I'll be there for, for our little 10 or 15 minute talk on a product. Maybe I'll discuss the difference between no pain gel stain and voodoo gel stain. Since someone just asked. Oh, Erin, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you for sticking out, sticking it out here with me. Uh, Debbie, it's a secret. <laughs> Just know that it's for a very large paint company that I'm very close to. It's not available yet. It's in the testing stages. And this was a test. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah, pool party. Exactly, Carol. Exactly. And this coming Friday, too. Our patio gets poured tomorrow. Woo -woo. It's big. It's a big patio and it gets poured tomorrow. They've been doing the form for the last two days and they're done today and the big cement truck will be here pumping in that cement and then we have to wait a week and then the cool coat guys or the cool deck or whatever, you know, cement gets hot. So you have to let that cure and set up for like a week and then pull those guys come out and do like that cool deck on top of it. It's some little special stuff that goes on the top so it's not hot and it's good to use around pools where people are barefooted. I will as soon as, as soon as it's done. Thank you, Debbie. I'm so glad you like it. I'm so glad you like it. Damask, I love Damask. All right, guys, I'm going to go. I'm starving. I'm going to go inside and make me a big old salad. Eat me a big salad and not eat on this tray. <laughs> I'll see you guys on Friday, okay? Y'all take care. Bye.